40-year-old Larry Malete is the husband of a missing San Diego woman named Maya Malete, last seen by her husband on January 7, 2021, after an alleged argument where she leaves on her own free will. Here's an interview Larry gives ABC San Diego on finally being concerned about his wife two days later when she misses their daughter's 11th birthday. I wasn't like totally worried until the birthday. I was thinking, okay, maybe... You know, like she's just blowing off steam, just like, you know, doing what she told me before where she wants everyone to leave her alone. This time I think she stepped up her game, you know, like she's blocking everyone. But now that, you know, she missed our daughter's birthday and like with all this pressure with the media and everything, um, there's something keeping her from contacting us. So worst case scenario, I don't know what what's keeping her from you know, contacting anyone, but this pressure should be enough pressure to say, hey, you guys, you know, I'm okay. Welcome to Monkey Tales, intriguing true stories wherever we can find them, told by me, the left-handed monkey. If your idea of a good time is a good true crime, then subscribe, or you're going to regret it. So we have a 39-year-old missing woman named Maya Malete. Now, she was born Maya Tabalanza on May 1st, 1981 in the Philippines. Her and her family would move to Honolulu. And here, while she was attending high school, she would meet Larry Malete. And soon after graduating, they would be married. Now, after finishing college, Maya gets a job as a contract specialist for the U.S. Navy. And Larry actually enlists in the Navy. Now, for the next 20 years of marriage, they would have three kids. And our story actually starts on January 7th of 2021, when Maya's sister, Mary Chris Druale, said that her brother-in-law said the last time he saw Maya, they had a giant argument. She locked herself in the room. She would not come out for any meals. She would not acknowledge any of her children. And He said, though, he heard somebody making food in the kitchen later that night, but he didn't bother to check. Now, alarm bells started to ring for him and everybody else when a couple of days later, Maya would miss her 11-year-old daughter's birthday, and that was completely out of character. So Mary Chris, her sister, would call the police and file a missing persons report, and that would be January 9th. I'd like to text her, you know, I don't know if she's getting there, but... I said, hey, babe, at least let us know or call someone and just let, at least let us know you're okay. I called her boss. She said, yeah, she didn't even log in. And that's the other alarming part because work for her is like a party. That's her outlet. According to CBS 8, Larry Malete released this statement. My wife, May, voluntarily left me and our three children. We do not know her whereabouts. Her disappearance is considered suspicious or criminal. The Chula Vista Police Department stated that I am not a suspect and there is no evidence of foul play. Now, I'm thinking it's safe to assume that Larry does not watch a lot of true crime because if he did, then he knows that in any missing persons case, if that person had a spouse, that spouse is a suspect by default. Even if that spouse was farting on the moon, they're going to be trying to figure out why they can smell it on Earth. And if you couldn't have physically done it yourself... They're going to be trying to figure out when you paid that hitman to do it. Larry Malete also states, I considered her still alive because she had voluntarily left our house at least twice in 2020 without saying goodbye to me or our three children. We have been praying for her safety and well-being. Maya has been acting erratically and locking herself in the bedroom and would not allow our children to see her at times. And she would often not join the children for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Okay, now, now this one had me thinking, okay, really thinking, okay, because I try to figure out, you know, what I could do to my wife to make her lock herself in a room for the entire day, not coming out to acknowledge her kids that she loves, and not coming out for any meals, and I could only come up with two things, okay. Now, all you family men out there, okay, chime in, okay, with another case for this scenario, okay? I can only come up with two. And the first one is, my wife would not come out because she's scared of me, okay? Now, anger dissipates, okay? Now, if they just had an argument, no matter how big, maybe even just for the children, you know, cooler heads would prevail. She would come out and maybe try to smooth things over if the marriage was worth it, right? Mind you. 
if your kids were worth it, mind you. Now, but fear, fear, that's another animal altogether. And the second thing that I could come up with is she didn't want the kids to see her in that condition, whatever condition that was, you know, mentally or even physically, if you know what I mean, okay, or both. Their family continues to accuse me and implying that I killed my wife, Maya. They want to destroy me and they slander and defame me. And now they claim they want to see my children. May, my wife, had expressed interest in leaving the family. She has been intoxicated more frequently, out drinking with friends and with her relatives. A search party is formed to search a 164-acre abandoned golf course and adjoining hiking trails, a lead due to it being in the vicinity of the final ping on Maya's cell phone. Mary Chris tells reporters that Larry has basically given her full control of the search for her sister, as he will see to the kids who are in shock right now. From there, Larry Malete stops talking to the media, lawyers up, and stops cooperating with detectives. Warrants were executed for the Malete home where they seized numerous undisclosed items. Okay, now I gotta get into something I kinda don't get. He files a declaration to deny visitation to his in-laws, okay? Basically blocking Maya's parents from seeing their own grandchildren. And his grounds for this is that he is accusing them of drunkenness, child neglect, and polluting the air. Okay, because they chain smoke and that's bad for the kids. We all know that, right? He also claims that his kids would be traumatized and harassed if they were allowed to visit their relatives. Okay, now this is a nine page declaration. It's all fine and dandy. And we get a glimpse into how much Larry hates his in-laws. Now, if she did come home, what did you just do? You basically blocked her entire side of the family from visiting your children. What does that accomplish? It confused Maya's parents also, Pablito and Noemi Tabalanza, because they would file their own petition to be granted visitation with their grandchildren, stating, Considering the daily trauma the children are going through with the disappearance of their mother, they need all the sources of stability, love, and support they can get. Continuing to deprive the children of our relationship is severely detrimental to their health and emotional well-being. So that, to me, actually sounds kind of reasonable, okay? What Larry was doing, he was cutting up all ties with Maya's side of the family, okay? With some trumped up, you know, blown up accusations. And um, makes me wonder, you know, did they even ever get along, you know, with Larry? You know, so here's Maya's sister, Mary Chris, and her husband, Richard, addressing the kids who at this point in the video have not seen for five months. We wanna see the kids. We miss them. We want to we wanna make sure they know that our side of family loves them. Now, doesn't it feel like something is wrong? I mean, he's moving funny, okay? You know, from not helping the search party to not helping the detectives, okay? His timing and his decisions are strange, right? From the initial audio that I let you guys hear of him describing his wife's disappearance, you know, without a lick of emotion, right, is strange. His denial of Maya's side of the family to even see the children makes me fucking wonder. Okay, because his kids are four, nine, and 11. They all could snitch on daddy. And this is what it makes me wonder. Did one of the kids see what happened? All of them see what happened. And you know what? <laughs> Let's just hope that they did not see anything. So here's another bombshell that I left out on purpose, you know, for a little bit of dramatic effect, if you don't mind, okay? So the day Maya goes missing is just a day before she was gonna go see a divorce lawyer, okay? I mean, talk about the bad timing for poor Larry Malete, right? But now I'm gonna let you guys hear some potentially disturbing audio, okay? So this was recorded by a neighbor's surveillance on the night of January 7th, around 10 p.m., okay? Near the Malete residence. So those loud bangs happened 
eight times that night. Okay. Now, didn't they sound like gunshots? Because it did to me. Okay. Now, the next piece of audio happened 30 minutes later. That really sounded like girls screaming to me, right? I'm not tripping at all. But I want you guys to listen to this one part. And it sounds like one of the girls is calling out Myla. Myla is the nickname of the Malete's youngest daughter. But the police aren't able to definitively say that the sounds came from the Malete's residence, right? But you know what they can do? They could just go knock, knock to all the neighbors around where that audio was recorded and just ask, you know what? Did you guys hear those loud bangs that night? Did you guys make that loud bang that night? Do you guys have any girls in your house and were they outside screaming and yelling that night? Okay, you know, the process of elimination. Do you think the detectives did that? Because I do. Now, what the cops did say is that they interviewed 64 people, you know, at the time. Now, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that those neighbors said, yeah, we heard it too, and we're just as baffled as you. But gunshot sounds were made that night, and there were girls screaming outside that night. So do cops have a good idea on who did it? Well, once they got the FBI involved, once they got the NCIS involved, once they got the San Diego DA involved, they seemed to have all their ducks in a row, and they had a very good idea on who did it because on October 19th, 2021, a loud flashbang was heard at the Malete residence as SWAT teams swarmed in and arrested him for the murder of Maya Malete. And that was just Tuesday from when this video was recorded. So we don't have a lot of information just yet. Now we know the police, they love to keep key evidence close to the vest and rightly so because you never know what can occur to turn an entire case upside down. But I also must say this, life is not a crime novel with a twist ending all the time, okay? A lot of the times, the spouse did do it. The words of Chula Vista's police chief, Roxana Kennedy, okay? She doesn't mince words. This is what she said. Investigative efforts. These efforts ultimately generated a variety of pieces of evidence that have become clear and overwhelming. Larry Malette, May's husband, is responsible for May's murder and disappearance. Today is a step towards justice, but it does not mark the end of our investigation. The Chula Vista Police Department will continue to seek answers for her family. Here's what we do know. When they first searched Larry's house, they seized dozens of guns, even illegal assault weapons that he is being separately charged for. But there is one gun, a 40 caliber handgun, that is unaccounted for. And large sums of money were being withdrawn from his bank leading up to his arrest. The family's attorney named Billy Little believes he was in the process of fleeing and that he hopes Larry Malete burns in hell. A good lawyer is one who feels just as their clients do. In the coming months, I expect Larry's black Lexus with the license plate Milani and its telematics to screw him over. If you don't know what telematics is, watch my Barry Morphew video and it will all be crystal clear. And those pesky neighbors again and their surveillance. They were able to catch Larry repositioning his black Lexus SUV in the garage the early morning hours of January 8th and did not return home for 11 hours. Most of us know that our cell phones are now tracking devices, and so did Larry because he leaves his phone at home. Police did reveal that he probably disposed her body two and a half hours away. Of course, they're not going to give away the exact location of a potential crime scene, but just know, they kind of have a good idea, the vicinity of where Larry was those 11 hours. Okay, now here's a crazy thing that Larry was doing, okay? So in the Filipino culture, there are people called the Mamba Barang and the Mang Kukulam, okay? So I'm pretty sure I'm saying it perfect so we don't have to fix anything, okay? So these are people that put spells and hexes for you, you know, for a price. And Larry was making more than one payment to these people so that he could quote unquote 
put harm on his wife. Now, I'm just going to say allegedly. So at this point in time in the story, in the case for us, the only thing we could do is pray that they bring Maya back to her family, you know, in whatever capacity that would be, you know. And there is the thing that troubles me so much about this case now, okay, and that's the three kids, okay. You know, let's just say that before I became a dad, okay, I could deal with these stories just fine. I was pretty numb to this stuff and I wouldn't give it a second thought. But now that I am a dad, there's, there's all these new emotions, you know, the sympathy, the empathy now, you know, this little guy, you know, what he's going through. Because the youngest child in that family is four years old. My son is not too far from four years old and I can't imagine, it's impossible for me to imagine someone trying to explain to him where his mom is, you know, th their understanding at that age, you know, is pretty good, but it's not there yet. You know, their concepts aren't fully developed and I can't imagine it. It's, it's, uh, I'm just going to say this, okay? If Larry Maletti is convicted without a shadow of a doubt to killing Maya, then I do hope this though for him. I hope that he does love his children. And just for that simple fact, him rotting in jail, you know, as slow as the days are, the worst thing for him would be knowing that those kids now, they don't respect him at all anymore. As a father, as a man, they despise him. They almost wish him dead, right? Because if that was me, that would eat me alive. But let's not forget, this is America. And a man is innocent until he is proven guilty. Now, I'm just presenting facts and scenarios, okay? And everything is alleged at this point. So, if you guys like this video, please hit the like button because that'll help the algorithm out a lot for me. And, and I work hard to earn your subscription. I only want to earn your subscription, okay? So, if you felt I earned it this time around. Please hit the subscribe button if you aren't already. And if you know a naked baby, my wife and I own a little onesie shop called happyedition.com and that'll solve your naked baby problem with a cute onesie. We design it, we ship it, we print it. Not in that order. <laughs> but anyways, guys, appreciate your eyeballs. Peace out. Okay, you're still here, I get it, but how did the detective solve the case of the missing rocks?